Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Racing Stacks TBR. Now, I played the game last night because I needed to get it done. There's what, like a day until February starts and I haven't done my TBR video yet because I've been house sitting and doing other things involving moving and all kinds of shit. So, haven't had time to do it the way I wanted to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by saying this TBR is obscene. For someone who is only two books away from their Goodreads goal and promised themselves they were not going to try and read 300 books ever again, still managed to fill this TBR with an unnecessary amount of books. With loads of pages and audiobooks and all sorts of things. So here's the game and you'll get to see it in full screen because like I said I recorded it last night so you're not going to get to see necessarily my reaction but I will narrate over it so you'll get to see hopefully a bit clearer how badly I played and then I will go through the TBR with you so let's cut to that clip okay so as I said I'm going to do this slightly differently you got my charming little voiceover whilst I click start now I actually did three attempts but I'm skipping straight to the third one because you don't need to hang about too much um, but mainly I was aiming for romance sci-fi and maybe a bit of thriller which is what I was trying to aim for but there were a couple of historical fictions and middle grades that came up that I just was not interested in but I knew that I had like adventures and things in my TBR my arm got stuck there my arm got stuck that's what happened there and um trying to like collect up all the different ones so let's have a look at this list we have a uh, contemporary blue cover mystery a book with the in the title a thriller with a blue cover uh, gothic fiction with final girls or final girl theme fantasy cold word in the title literary pulpic was not excited for that one horror a book with the in the title classic was a cat pick which i will tell you more about in a sec it sounds like it's gonna be really straightforward but that one is trickier than you'd think um romance blue cover and fantasy last chance author i don't know what all of these blue covers came where all the they all came out of nowhere they all came out of nowhere. And welcome back. So yeah, obviously Racing Stacks stops when I hit 10 prompts. So I already have 10 books on my TBR from that. Except I worked out with all of the read-alongs, the one readathon, uh, one and a half readathons, buddy reads and book clubs that I'm part of, I already had 10 books on my TBR and none of the prompts matched with the books that were already going to be on my TBR. So when I say this is obscene, I, I'm not out of the habit yet of making massive TBRs. And I do quite like having a massive TBR because it means I can like mood read my way through it. But the fact that half of this is books that I have to read is worrying. It's a little concerning, I'm not gonna lie. <sighs> let's start with... Yeah, let's just, I don't know why I had to start that sentence so awkwardly. Let's start with the book clubs then. So first we have Lamentable Library. I will be reading The Mercies. Now this is an ARC copy that I found from a charity shop, which is why it's got a very distinct, a very kind of plain front cover. Um, but essentially this, I believe, is the first adult novel that was written by Kieran Millwood Hargraves. Now I've read The Deathless Girls and A Girl of Ink and Stars, uh, which is a middle grade and YA novel. This is the first adult novel, I'm assuming. It, I mean, it's described as like sinister and things like that. I believe it's kind of like a remote island mystery type novel. I really enjoy Hargrave's style of writing, so I'm not too worried about the fact that it's those things that I've enjoyed from previous books, but scaled up into adult territory, because if anything that's going to make it darker and more sinister um, but I'm going in kind of blind as to what the story is because I literally just felt like stumbled across this copy last year and haven't checked it since so that is the first one. Obviously we are on to book 13 out of 15 of the Skullduggery Pleasant Read Along, uh, Dead Famous Along. I am so terrified that it, this is coming to an end. I don't know what I'm going to do with my time if I don't have a Derek Landy audiobook to look forward to at the end of every month because I always kind of cram them in as like part read, part audiobook at the end of the month as a way to kind of like just enjoy the last two days of my month. Do you know what I'm saying? So, and also so that I don't forget when it comes to the live what I wanted to say about this book in the first place. But oh, it's so close to the end. I can't talk about it. You'll have seen it in a hundred other TBRs, what the general premise is. This concerns me, this dude right here, concerning. But I can't tell you why, and I can't tell you who he is, but you should go and read the series if you haven't yet. <laughs> it's Bevies and Books book club. And for February, the prompt is a porn star martini. 
and it's either erotica or sex positive books if you're not into smut. I was gifted this which is called Room Hate, it's about two people who are sharing a summer home um, who hate each other except I don't think they hate each other, I think it's angry sex vibe. Do you know what I'm saying? So if you gifted this to me, because it was on my um, Amazon wish list, um, if you did gift this to me, uh, can you tell me who you are? And can you tell me why you think I need to be this thirsty? Because I was going to go for something a bit more subdued, a bit more sex positive, but no, apparently for Bevies and Books in February, I'm just going to straight up read porn. So that's fun. And then, I, like I said, I've got a few, I've got a few buddy reads. Um, we'll start with A Veil of Truth and Trickery. This I'm also kind of tallying up with Faro Feb because I always catch Faro Feb at the last minute and I always forget that it's a thing because I'm so busy focused on Blackathon and turning 30 that I forget that there are other things going on in February. This is an Akatar retelling that is reverse harem, which would have worked fine for Babies and Books if I wasn't already on that porn hype, but I'm meant to be buddy. This is originally going to be like a read along, except only the first book is out and I think the second book isn't coming out until next year so I was like there's no point doing a read-along and spanning that over a year and then it took me ages to get hold of my copy it was out of print when I tried to order it as a paperback in the UK um, so I then had to order it from the American one and it took like ages to get to me we were supposed to start this in January and I didn't get my copy in time but now that I have my copy I'm supposed to be buddy reading this with Ali from Hardback Order, Ali from the Chaotic Reader, Kelly from the Velvet Library, and I think Molly from Mind of Molly is meant to be joining us as well, but they've been really busy, like really, really busy with work and just generally trying to survive. So I don't know if they're jumping on, but it'd be great to get their thoughts on this if they do decide to jump on. But this is, this is gonna be wild. This is going to be straight up wild and I'm so excited to read it, but I'm fully expecting it to be shit, but in the best possible way. Do you know what I'm saying? Then we have, next buddy reads, we have Foundation, which is the first chronological, like, isn't the first chronologically, there is one um, that comes before this, it's like a prelude to Foundation, um, but this is the first that was ever published, which is the Isaac Asimov Foundation series, which has recently turned into a TV series from uh, Apple TV, hence that horrible sticker in the corner there. Still better than the original covers though. I do prefer the TV tie-ins, which is so unlike me, but basically Lizzie, Danny and I have been thirsting over Lee Pace for some time. And the TikToks that I keep stumbling across of Foundation, I don't know what the plot is. I don't know what the plot is. I just know that Lee Pace seems to be in the shower quite a lot or like just semi-naked and really tall and just generally really sexy. So I'm hoping the book, I can like envisage him there and we can just spend some quality time together. And then my friend Hannah is also jumping on because even though she doesn't necessarily see Lee Pace the way Lizzie and I do, um, you know, we're all friends and we like a buddy read, but also it's hella short, so I love that. And I am really trying to accept sci-fi into my life. I don't massively love sci-fi, so the fact that it's nice and short should help. Um, but mainly I'm reading this because I want to, I want to watch Lee Pace, except I don't have Apple TV. So until it's available on other streaming services, I just have to wait and I hate that. So I'm, I'm Lee Pacing it slightly differently. And then I will probably rewatch the three Hobbit films for the, what, 12 minutes that he's in those. Um, but anyway, there's that. And then the final buddy read is Blackwater Sister. This was in my TBR for January. And I gifted a copy of this to Abby. And I was like, maybe we'll buddy read. And then Abby was like, yeah, not now though. And I was like, all right, sweet, fair enough. So I'm hoping we will have more time to do this in February. We've kind of got it in um, to read like a chapter a day, which works out like 13 pages a day. So it should be easily done. Um, but essentially this is a uh, BIPOC ghost story. Um, about a woman who lives in Malaysia and then when her grandmother dies her grandmother's ghost kind of just sits on her shoulder and creates chaos. Um, I imagine it's going to be quite sinister and dark. This was Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophes book recommendation for the Gothoba giveaway box so was really really excited to get my hands on that and I just need to get to it now and I'm mm, mm, mm. you know I'm ready I'm ready for this book. So that's, yeah, okay, so we're already, we're already, we've already got a stack, do you know what I'm saying? And I'm already putting myself in the face with it. We've already got a stack, and that, these are the books I have to read. 
I have to read these because I've I've an or a moral obligation to read these. Do you know what I'm saying? Some of these I have a financial obligation um, because there is also I I forgot I also have a book club starting with my Discord peeps. Um, the Discord link will be down below. I'm not going to put in this video what the book club book is because it is meant to be a surprise I post it out to everyone so that it should arrive in time for you to open it on the first of every month and then we will buddy read that but if you're on the discord you get to choose which genre book it is and then I pick a new release in that genre that I'm excited for us to read and you get a copy of it via waypoint but I'm not going to give it away in this video because I'm hoping to film and edit this today so that it should go up today thus prior to February and I don't want to spoil the surprise for people who've already got involved so just know there's these and then there's the other one that I forgot so yeah there's <sighs> okay right next we have uh read-alongs uh no no oh, don't that's a lie next we have readathons and like I said I've got one and a half readathons that we're doing so for buzzwordathon I'm reading she's too pretty to burn this was gifted to me from Jamie for Christmas so thank you very much Jamie it's been on my Amazon wish list so long I don't remember what it's about but I've heard it's sinister it looks stunning and I'm excited I've no idea what it's about but I'm excited um, and obviously the prompt for buzzword thon was pronouns and it's she's right at the start so it made it nice and easy to pick and then the other one the other official readathon that I'm doing is blackathon because it is black history month over in the US we have it I think either in July or October time over here in the UK um, I'm potentially mixing that up with pride as well um, pride might be June July and then I think October is black history month in the UK but Jessie over at Bowties and Books obviously hosts their readathon, Blackathon, every year. And every year I make a TBR and then I read maybe one of the books that I've set myself. So I'm being sensible about it this time. I'm not setting a book for every single prompt. I'm setting a, a list for the just the sci-fi and fantasy group. Except I've got a contemporary in here because I did kind of struggle with one of the prompts. Um, but we'll get we'll get to that. So the first prompt was loyalty and betrayal. So I'm picking up the Unbroken. This has been in the TBR a couple of times last year. Um, but this is essentially a political high fantasy um, that has very much Gideon the Ninth vibes as well. Um, in the fact that you've got like one brain, one brawn potential romance element by pop author which is important um, and I'm really really intrigued by this it's by Orbit so I know it's going to be a, a good high fantasy and yeah generally really excited for that one but like I said it's been on my TBR a couple of times and I just need to commit to it next is Amari and the Night Brothers and that prompt was for a book with pages between 312 and 387 pages and I think this is like 370 and essentially this is a middle grade that won the booktube champions of 2021 last year and I still haven't read it even though I have a really pretty shiny copy shiny sprayed edges haven't picked it up yet I need to just get off my ass and do it um really yeah if I don't read this in Feb, can someone just rock up to my house and slap me, please? Because I don't know why I'm sleeping on this book. I'm just wasting time at this point. But yes, middle grade about a young girl finding her brother's adventure shenanigans, excited for it. And then the first of the racing stacks slash uh, Blackathon prompt. One of the prompts was um, Trans Spectrum Rep. Now I didn't own any books that I knew had Trans Spectrum Rep. This has the trans flag on the front cover though. It is a memoir about a queer black person and I don't know if it's gonna have it in this, but again, had this on my TBR forever. And then for Racing Stacks, one of the prompts was a contemporary with a blue cover, which this also is. So I'm kind of mixing the two. Obviously this isn't a sci-fi or a fantasy, but it was the only thing that I owned that had rep that I thought could work. And if you haven't seen, I'm trying to do a book buying ban without actually banning myself from buying books officially, um, where I have to clear my TBR vets before I'm allowed to buy a new book. So when it comes to TBRs and things, I'm only gonna be TBRing books that I own. If I read an audiobook via Scribd, for example, and love it, then I will put it probably as a paperback or hardback on my wish list and then get to it when I can. And I will probably buy more than one book every time I clear my TBR vets, but I'm setting at least 20 vets 
um, so that I can either read them or unhaul them before I get to them. So if you have um, some trans spectrum sci-fis with BIPOC authors, which is a very niche, very specific thing that I need from you, if you have some recommendations for that, please put them in the comments down below because I would much rather read something specific to the prompt, um, but obviously the closest I've got is this on my own TBR. Um, and I'm, I am trying to narrow down my own TBR. We are doing we are doing our best. And by we, I mean me. I don't know why I got all royal we about it then, but I did, so. Anyway, um, okay, so I'm not necessarily gonna do the rest of the racing stacks prompts in the order that they were on the screen earlier. And one of the prompts I can't do at all, which is the cat pick for classics. Um, I don't know why I keep landing on classics. I've had classics land in my TBR every single month so far, which is fair considering it's meant to be like a dark academia themed racing stacks game. I get that, but I'm, I'm done. I'm done with classics and I'm so done that I actually packed them all already. So I didn't have a way of getting my cats to choose which classic they wanted. Um, so I will probably carry that prompt over to next month. So there are only nine racing stacks prompts. Um, eight to go because obviously we've already had the contemporary one. The next one was gothic fiction final girl. Now this is meant to be like a final girl theme but I've taken it more literally and just gone with a book that has final girl in the cover and I'm going to read the last final girl um, as an audiobook which is I think available on script but I can also get it by audible and this is yeah another final girl trope but it's by um but it's by Stephen Graham Jones which is the same author of Only the Good Indians and My Heart's a Chainsaw so I'm really tempted because I didn't actually get a chance to start My Heart's a Chainsaw in January that I might make that my vlog for Discord uh, over the next month and read those three books uh by Stephen Graham Jones in Feb but I will definitely read The Last Final Girl um, as an audiobook because that's nice and easy and I can do that. Another one that is kind of a bit up in the air I landed on Romance with a blue cover. Now I have uh, Once Upon a Broken Heart which has a blue cover um, which I also need to review for NetGalley because I didn't when it was the ebook um, so I really need to get to that because I've had that on there for ages and my ratio is not looking great but but in Feb, don't know if you're aware of this, there's this really popular series coming out by a really popular author uh, called Crescent City and uh, book two is coming out and it's got a very blue cover and if my pre-order arrives, <laughs> it will be that one. I'll be reading that instead of this and putting this off for yet another month. But if it doesn't arrive in time, say we're like, you know, it's meant to be released on the 15th, say for whatever reason, my distributor fails me again, like they have with previous orders and my pre-order doesn't arrive on time and it's only like the last week then this is my backup plan this is what i want to read this is my backup plan do you know what i'm saying so next we have um horror with the in the title so i'm going with the project this was gifted to me by ben so thank you very much ben again had this on my tbr for ages this is kind of a girl joins a cult leaves a cult like has to fight her way back into a cult type narrative that's kind of all I know about it but it just looks so creepy and I know that this is one of Tish from Little Wolf's favourite books so I'm really really excited to finally get onto it and I need to read Sadie as well um, but yes very very excited for the dark and spooky. I read quite a few like gothic -y books in January and really enjoyed it and let's be honest this in 2022 really all I want to read is gothic and romance. That 20 minutes flew by. Next was literary and pulpic there was a a whole bunch of literary books that I put on Twitter but you all picked the Midnight Library so thanks for that not really interested in reading Matt Haig yes I put it on there because it's part of my own TBR and I'm going to count it as a TBR vet if I can and just remove it from my TBR because I just don't think Matt Haig is the author for me but maybe this book will change my mind we'll, we will find out we will find out together. Um, then we had Fantasy with a Cold Word prompt. This was another book that I picked up originally for Bevies and Books and then just never actually got around to reading. I think I got about 40 pages in. But this is a fantasy about a royal family who control the magic resources in a kingdom. 
and the family are fucking horrible to each other and they all try and kill each other and unfortunately loads of people die and make this youngest child the duke um, and she has to kind of start ruling and controlling magic and then shenanigans, pl political intrigue, things like that. It's quite a dense fantasy which is why I struggled with it initially trying to cram it in but because I can like kind of carry books over if I need to I'm not as stressed about it being in my TBR this month. I am more excited than I was previously having picked it for my TBR. Um, then we have a fantasy last chance author. Bridget Kemmerer obviously wrote the A Curse So Dark and Lonely trilogy. I read the first one and thought it was pants and I'm going to try Defy the Night. And if it's not for me, which I, I really don't think it will be, then I will just call it quits on Bridget Kemmerer and we will part ways as whatever it is that this relationship is. That we don't have do you know what i'm saying so no idea what this is about i like that it's shiny i know that it was a fairy loot or a luma crate book at one point so clearly popular but i just don't think it's going to be for me so i'm going with really really low expectations and then finally we have mystery with the in the title and i'm going with the howling hag mystery this is a middle grade again gothic spooky cats whole vibe um, and i am actually really really excited to read this considering i know so little about it and because it's middle grade it's going to be very quick and easy to get to which is nice considering like i said obscene amount of books for the shortest month of the year so jesus anyway let me know in the comments down below which book you're most excited to read in feb Check out those links, treat yourself to a book from Waypoint today to help support me and my content, and other than that, have a nice day.